Hi everyone, Bruce Wartz here. Things didn't go too well with the problems I had with the neighbors, but you know what? I have to be honest with all of you. Um, I didn't think I was gonna make it through the last month doing the videos because um, I was so stressed out, but I came to the understanding that you guys are therapeutic for, uh, for me, the comments and the support. Don't worry guys, I'm not going anywhere. Going through some hard times, but you know what? The comments help guys. You guys are really supportive to this channel. I can't thank you enough. What are we looking at? We're looking at a black surface. Yes, we're gonna get right into it. I'll stress till January 21st and I'll just, I do good work when I stress out. So let's get into it. Uh, black surface of the moon. A black surface absorbs light very differently to pale or lighter surfaces. A black surface will absorb the energy as the light comes to the surface of the black surface. It'll hit the black surface and the energy will be transformed into an energy of heat and they're thus uh, heating up yep the surface as for a pale area because right now you're looking at a city by the way what do you think of it do you like it do you see how big i made the bridges uh, what do you think of the tower in the center that i made do you all think it's pretty cool pardon you don't see it okay no 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 i'm not losing it it's that um, okay you really don't see it well it's because i've spent years constructing a city on my new planet. We're like 100,000 people. We have bridges and everything. But what I did is I kept the same reflectivity as the surface with the construction pieces. I put, you know, substituted with, you know, guitar picks, black straws, whatever you want. It's filled. The whole surface is filled. You can see a couple of billowing lights there. And we're going to go see um, a very interesting way to explain, quite simply, the way I am seeing area, um, areas of um, structuring on the moon in the dark areas. Why um, uh, are we not seeing them revealed once the Terminator line goes by? Well, that's very simple. Light is absorbed by the black surface. I don't know if you notice, but the light, it almost doesn't look like I'm shining onto it. It's only showing on the wood basically around it, okay? Of course, I'm pushing it. It's a big light. I'm really close to the surface. It is going to show on black at one point, but I'm exaggerating. It's six cardboards, uh, very um, shiny cardboards that you can see. They're actually plastics, actually, and I have cardboards and plastic pieces and uh, silver and metallic pieces, guitar picks, you name it on the surface. But mark my words, we're going to go see in a way where I show you the surface of the moon and exactly how I find these structures because these dark areas are harder than the more pale areas to see. And then we'll talk about how light interacts with different colors on different surfaces. Many people are telling me, probably the same trolls, always talking about the uninteresting refraction of light. Chromatic aberration. Well, they shouldn't have mentioned it because now I'm going to prove them wrong and I'm going to show you exactly all what refraction of light comes from which object at which color. I will be testing with crystals. I will be testing with amethysts, with moldavites, with rocks that have uh, quartz and very shiny surfaces. And we're going to try to recreate a color. We're going to do like those craters, those big blue spots along the craters. You're going to see it's not as easy as you think to recreate those. Why? Because the refraction of light that's coming from those objects is white. And if a color is coming from the surface and is blue refraction, it's because the surface is blue. The refraction that's over the surface is refracting over a blue surface. There's the city. There's the tower. What do you think of that? And as you can see, well, my lava flow is uh, showing there. It's about 10,000 years old. Well, what the hell is that? Just light refraction, right? That's that's all that we're looking at. And um, this, it's, it's actually a blue piece. So I'm sort of laughing because, you know, the refraction of light, does it necessarily mean we're going to see blue refraction of light? Will we see white refraction of light of a colored object on a dark surface? I think there's a lot of tests that we have to do, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I think an overall really good first test. This is for first test, I'm really, really happy that I'm able to show you some comparisons. What are we looking at here in the dark? Well, watch this. This is the highest tower that's on the surface that I made, that I showed you that's standing up off the surface, two and a half inches, and yep, it's picking up light, and so is the little tower that's underneath. Let's go see that tower right now. 
That white light of snow or ejecta off to the right is caused by me cutting the dark plastic, revealing a, pla uh, a white interior to the object and light is refracting on it. And here an earring, tungsten, which is probably close to titanium representation on the moon on the bottom. So you see the white line, everywhere you see white is the refraction that is coming off of the high elevated objects. The same way we reveal the structures on the moon when the terminator line goes by in more pale areas. So wherever I've created an elevated structure, a bending of the surface or an object that has any sh shape or form, the refraction picks it up right away because it has a different angle as to the surface. So even though it's a dark surface, there are structures there and those structures have different angles on that surface. Therefore, the light is going to refract from them and is going to show us the signs of the structures hidden in the dark areas of the moon. Phenomenon occurs when the color wavelengths, my friends, in light are separated and rejoined because a camera is like a prism. And what happens is the light bends through improperly, not the right way, and it reflects the edge of the image can be chromatic aberration. It's the edge of an image that can have chromatic aberration and not like a certain channel keeps telling everyone on my channel that it's craters that have chromatic aberration. If the entire focal plane is the entire image and is completely focused on the entire image, no reason for chromatic aberration to occur unless a part of an image is out of focus. If a part of an image is out of focus, then the light like through the prism will bend improperly and will give us some, you know, refraction back chromatic aberration. So this is what I show uh, to give you guys an idea of why I'm seeing um, structures the way I'm seeing them in certain areas like there's nothing really uh, easy to see when you're looking at this you can only see outlining yes we're not into the fine detail but um, like here we see the connections going to those square rectangles that by playing with the exposure by descending it I was able to get a view of exactly um, what was on the surface of the moon if the color of a surface is anything other than white it means that it absorbs light of some wavelengths. For example, a surface that appears red absorbs the yellow, green, blue, and violet light, while reflecting a red light. A surface that appears green absorbs all colors except green. Hey, and to my chromostereopsis freaks, well, chromostereopsis is just a visual illusion whereby the impression of depth is conveyed in two-dimensional color images, usually of red-blue or red-green colors, but chromatic aberration results from the differential refraction of light depending on its refracting surfaces of the eye obliquely and are therefore strongly refracted. When we look at a celestial object and NASA tells us it's red and we take a picture of it and then we go, oh yeah, it's red. Why isn't anyone saying it's chromatic aberration if we're still seeing red around it? The colors red, green, and blue, or a combination of these three colors, can appear around objects. Longitudinal chromatic aberration can be dramatically reduced by bringing down the f-stop. It's not hard. Okay, Charles? <laughs> I like bugging people. Listen, I'm going through a lot of pressure and stress. This, it's soothing. Look at this. This is September 9th. Uh, with all, let's get serious. September 9th, the finding, the meteor, right? Something smacking into the moon. Uh, definitely, you'll see fire, uh, not just fire. We're going to look at three moments of impact. In this one impact, we're going to see three explosions on the surface. I've showed it before, but of course, that's right, not this close and not that clear. My goal is always look at that. My goal is to get rid of of the noise to uh, alleviate any uh, distortion. So I'm always working on it. So of course, if I see just this little swivel extra, I'm gonna show it. 
Why not? It's proof, right? We don't see much on the surface of the moon. And this is pretty incredible. It's a massive object on September 9th, 2019, smashing into the moon. And don't forget, go and look at the landing of India, where they had lost contact with it. We're right around there, my friends. It's the 9th or the 10th. So this is either, or, or the 8th. Anyways, it's before or after, hours before or after India, um, uh, you know, missed landing. So, uh, and I don't even know, I haven't looked to see if they had found it. There it is coming down here. Look at the size of it. Watch the impacts. One, two, the big impact in the center, and three, right there in the bottom. Let's see it again. Three impacts. Look at it coming down to the left. It's a long line now because it's on fire, right? It's going to enter the atmosphere of the moon. There you go. Pow! Lighting on fire because of the oxygen. And then there's a third flash. <laughs> I like teasing you all. Listen, we have a lot of fun here. We know there's oxygen on the moon and it just so happens it could be more than we think. Buy yourself a cup and get in troll clothes if you want. Support the channel. I'm on my way 2020 to Arizona. <laughs> Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. What them there seems to be the problem.